continue i'll see eva is already here yeah brilliant sure sure, sure. and if you can go on social as well parallelly i'll be back in 2 minutes sure so guys again uh, i believe you already got to know what are the questions we want uh, you have to answer in the chat window but i also would like to mention that guys make sure that you follow us on all our social media handles we are present on majority of our social media handles whether it's instagram facebook youtube linkedin and the best part about you following us on these social media platforms is that you get the notification about these uh, webinars these free sessions that we are doing immediately over there we mentioned it over there even the registration link is over there as well so that really helps you that even if you are not on our email chain and for whatever
name, but if you have introduced yourself, uh, thank you very much and being here. Uh, one second. Or is it someone else doing YouTube? Sean, sure, if you can confirm on YouTube. Yes, sir, checking right now. I'm actually. Okay, sure. Guys, sincere sorry. apologies for that. Give us a few more minutes and just put in the chat window. We are looking into that uh, YouTube. Hmm? Yeah, in go to webinar, you can hear and uh, just give us a few more minutes. In the meantime, let me take question. Uh, Pravin is saying, I'm working in IT. Audible on YouTube as well. Audible now in YouTube, yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, so guys, that, guys, a uh, just a second, sir. Uh, sure. Guys, a remark for anybody who is watching us on any of the platforms, in case if you are facing any issues with the audio, please do put it in the chat window. Sometimes we can't directly check. And if you're the only one who's facing the audio issue, please, you know, leave the meeting and join in again. That issue would be resolved automatically. So no worries on that end. Uh, brilliant, guys. Uh, especially for our YouTube guys who uh, were unable to hear us earlier. Um, if you have not yet introduced yourself, go and introduce and tell about uh, what's your background, what questions do you have for us, and if you have to pick cloud, one cloud, which cloud you're picking and why. And if you don't know, if you need clarity, tell us your background and we can guide or suggest what I would have done if I'm in your situation probably 10, 15 years back, or if I have to restart again, what I would do based on your situation. With that, my name is Atul, and we'll be starting this and now this particular session. So let's begin with in terms of the title is how to get a higher paid job in cloud computing. Now, cloud computing, when we use the word, is very generic, and there are multiple clouds multiple streams and the objective is to cover as much as covering comprehensive or like co completing everything possible from a high level uh, point of view including all the different job profiles and that's where i'm bringing eva and cloud expert she's working with uh, uh, one of the big cloud uh, provider which you'll see when i win i come to the introduction but few housekeeping went before that is you all are if you're watching on our go to webinar you are muted for our, from our side but you can ask questions if on youtube or linkedin make sure that or facebook make sure that or in in um, go to webinar as well make these sessions interactive ask questions the more question you ask and use these sessions to say if you whatever doubt you have so that see we can answer those questions uh, and and help you in your journey so before i always tell something, it's always important that why, why you should pick a particular thing or why everyone is moving towards cloud. If you have heard buzzword in IT, everyone is doing towards cloud. The reason being is that if you look at cloud computing market, the last seven, eight, 10 years has grown exponentially. And it is, we are still at a very infancy, very young stage. And there's a huge, huge potential to grow everything that is built on on-premise, 
most of these things are already migrating to the cloud or will eventually migrate to the cloud because of the benefits cloud brings. So if you are in IT, if you're already working or would like to work, there's no way you can escape cloud. Cloud is where the industry is, uh, is where moving towards. And that totally reflect in jobs. If you look at the job and it's growing on upwards side on in terms of job opportunities in the, in, for cloud. And that is being reflected in any country you are from. And I would love to know which country you are from. Put it in your chat window on say which country you are from so we can see. And in future, we can do some sessions around job related, specific to job related in that specific country as well. So if you're looking from US, hundreds of job uh, opportunities, whether you're from US, UK, Canada, Middle East, Singapore, uh, Australia, or India, whatever country you're from, just go to Google and say cloud jobs in whatever your country. And then there are different types of jobs that we are going to cover here. So put in the chat window which country you're from, so I can I can we can we can look into or we can have a look at it as well. Myself, I'm based in UK, London. Eva is based in India, and my team, most of my team members are in India, but a lot of students or a lot of guys who come to the session are either from US or UK or India or Middle East countries as well. So, in terms of what we are going to learn today, uh, so if you look at, we'll be talking about the structure of Central of center of excellence in a in company, how the structure look like in terms of and where does this cloud related ro roles fit in? Where exactly you're going to play a role in whatever role you are, whether it's uh, like CXOs or leaders or management layer or tech resources, the cloud is going to be applicable at each stage. And the job opportunities, the job profile, the job interviews will differ depending on what stage you are at or what level you are at. So we're going to talk about that or I'm going to bring Eva to cover that. We we'll also look at different type of uh, the companies you can join, whether it's cloud vendor, cloud partners, or cloud customers. We'll also look at the different phases of interview preparation. So pre like which is phase one, you begin with preparation phase, then you go to the invitation phase or the CV phase, where you look and identify your, or you get an interview invitation for the interview of either face to face or over a zoom call then comes the interview phase which is plays a very big big, big role and then the transition phase once you have job job joined the job your actual journey begins from there how do you then start your journey onto that cloud role or if you're transitioning from one role to another or one cloud to another cloud or, or single cloud to multi-cloud how do you transition in that We'll also look at some of the sample questions you can ask. You can be asked in the interviews depending on the positions you are at. Now, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Atul. As I said, I um, have 22 plus years of experience into IT, mainly primarily on data and as a data architect. But from last few years now, I've been doing multi-cloud on the architecture side. I help our customers based in UK or US to migrate them to cloud. Uh, also, whatever we are going to cover or teach, it's being done for multiple years. And I was also part of one of the biggest migrations here in UK from on-premise to cloud, some huge, huge, huge data, data sizes. What I'm the most proud of is I've helped indigenous like you, 10,000 plus indigenous like you to learn cloud and cloud-related technologies. Now, this is what is my... I started learning cloud back in 2013-14, and 13-14, and, and I saw a massive, massive increase in my freelancing rate. I used to, I work as a contractor. I used to work as a contractor. Now we do uh, pick up big projects. So I used to work, and then I saw a shift in my role or my salary, take-home salary, a day rate when after learning cloud. But this is not how I started. I started, I think, around when I started my journey, first five years have been very, very tough for me in terms of uh, in terms of my earning. And something changed back in 2005 that transformed my life in terms of what I was drawing. And what I learned in back in 2005, six is that if you are in IT, you have to constantly learn and grow. You have to constantly learn and grow. So I kept learning new and new skills every couple of years, moved from a basically a database administrator to a security administrator, security, ERP, integrations. And when I looked at back in 2014-15, I realized, hey, everything is moving towards cloud. 
And that's when I started learning cloud. I started with Oracle Cloud. You don't need to start with Oracle Cloud. You pick whatever cloud you use right for you and will tell you on what you should be looking at. So pick up cloud appropriate for you. And then once you start with one cloud, pick up then multi-cloud. And that is ultimately after one or two years when you become an expert in one cloud, then pick up other clouds as well, a multi-cloud. And that is where the game is. Now, whatever I'm showing you is to show you what's possible. What's because when I started my journey, I never imagined it's possible. So this is all because you have to constantly learn and grow. And I'm not saying I've, I'm the only one who's who has done that, or I'm the only person who have done or uh, can do it. I've hundreds and hundreds of students like you who have done this, similar to what I have done. So if you're at your early stage, if you're already working or not getting growth or not seeing the result, Maybe you need to spend a little bit more focused and learn all these things. And that's what we're going to learn uh, here today. Just to inspire you, these are some of the guys who have, like, like you, a couple of months back or a couple of one or two years back, and now working as different into cloud. Dinesh here, uh, which is like probably working as a pro program manager on cloud. Kamla here, here in UK, working as a data architect now. Another one, Yash, who's got a cloud offer or job offer in LA or another one offers. So these are, what I'm trying to say is, whatever is your stage that you are right now, it's possible to get a job into cloud as well. With that, I would like to invite, or I'll be introducing uh, Eva. Uh, she's the speaker. She's going to talk about uh, whatever we have mentioned earlier. She's going to talk. She's a senior program manager at Google. And she, she has done it uh, from, she's coming from Microsoft Azure, Microsoft background currently working with Google as a program manager. And I'll let her introduce, when I when I bring her, let her introduce one more time. But she's very, very experienced, 15 plus years experience. I met her a couple of years back when, uh, with our, uh, when she was working with Microsoft um, on, 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 on one of the projects. Brilliant, brilliant speaker, brilliant implementer. And you will see and hear her in a minute. So you're in for a trade today. She has worked with some of the big names like HP, Dell, Microsoft, Google, and she's work currently working with Google. And like me, she's also love to mentor individuals like you um, who want to start their journey or have already working on the, on to the cloud journey, but now move to the next level. And that next level could be from an administration or an arc, uh, on a cloud engineer to an architect, or maybe from an architect to a program manager, or maybe program manager to a senior program manager, or, uh, or to the cloud implementer. So you'll, you're going to hear some of the stories from her. So as I said earlier, what we are going to learn is today, careers in cloud computing, four phases to land your dream zone, uh, dream zone job. And these four phases are important for you. Some phase might be quicker, some phase might take longer time, but the most important, I personally feel is the interview phase, but then before that, you need to prepare yourself. That's what she's going to cover uh, on here. Now, these four phases we'll look at, and then finally, at every point in time, at logical point, we'll be taking up the questions as well on this. Now, before we move forward, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about yourself to say which cloud topic you're interested in. And if you're not sure, you say, I'm not sure, I'm confused between one or two, which one I should do. So put in the chat window, if you're in YouTube or chat, which one you're going to pick? AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google, Oracle, DevOps, Kubernetes, whatever you're going to pick. Uh, tell, put it. And if you want to know more about these topics, what you want to know about, you go to this URL, ketonacadby.com forward slash select cloud and put it your name or email address so that we can give you more. I can invite you for more respective sessions. Like if you want to talk about AWS or hear more about AWS, we'll have, depending on what kind of a response we get, we'll be having more of these sessions on AWS or Azure or, or, or Google or Oracle and so on. Let me see first in um, in the Guto meeting, and then I'll go to in my uh, YouTube and one or two guys, if you can put it in the chat as well uh, for me on um, as well here in LinkedIn as well. Let me know. So I can see. Okay, okay. So from an introduction point of view, the guys, a lot of guys from India, US, Germany, Nigeria. Uh, okay, from a answers point of view, I see Sandhya AWS, Shahid GCP. Um, Adshile is saying, I'm not sure. So Adshile, tell us know what your background is. If you're not sure, if you're, um, I will cover that as well. 
मनजीत अजयर एडब्ल्यू एस एडब्ल्यू एस एडब्ल्यू एस दिव्या निखिल भार्गव Khondi Singh, I'm Pranad, and working as an infrastructure manager, IT, working towards cloud. As you understand well, but I'm very limited in using as you in current company. So need to know how I can get command on working in and crack interviews for AZ one o four and three o four. Brilliant, Khondi. Uh, my team will reach out to you to get give you more information about AZ one o four and three o four. There are some hands-on labs, some uh, things that that you should be doing. We'll be talking about as well. Rohit again. Okay, there's a lot many messages are coming. So I think great guys. I'm going to review this, and based on that, I can I think I can see the number one is coming AWS, number two is coming Azure, and there's here and there I see a GCP. Okay, good, interesting, interesting. Okay, good guys. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk about more. I see Mohammad Fakrudi in AWS, AWS DevOps. Chandra Shekhar is saying the questions as well. We'll be taking questions as well. Brilliant. Um. Okay, great. Finally, someone said from YouTube. Oracle Cloud. I started my journey with Oracle Cloud. I'll I'll be transparent with you, but then moved on to AWS Azure. Abdul is saying from uh, GCP and so on. Guys, good one. I can see some GCP uh, as well. People are started asking GCP, AWS and GCP. So Smit is saying brilliant, brilliant. Okay, good job, guys. Um, I'm going to. We are going to have some more sessions on these topics as we come. So stay tuned. If you're filled in form in ketonacademy.com forward slash select cloud. We'll be sending you the email notifications when we have these free sessions. Okay, now with that, uh, whatever we're going to talk ab about today is a lot of useful to the point uh, content. But then today's show is sponsored by our program. We run programs in AWS, Azure, Google, Oracle, all the clouds. But today's show is sponsored by our AWS uh, Solution Architect program. There's a new certification came, I think, two couple of days back only. Which is a latest version of AWS Solution Architect. We do comprehensive step-by-step -step learning with hands-on labs. It's a live interactive sessions, hands-on labs, uh, exam questions, CV preparation, and on-job support. Uh, if you like, I'll talk about that. Not now, later. We also give you a complete step-by-step -step eight-week roadmap to go from a complete beginner having no idea about cloud, going with basic concepts of cloud like. Uh, Cloud service model, deployment model, different type of cloud uh, uh, cloud um, uh, providers, and then uh, all the architecture. Uh, how do you create these cloud account? How do you lab work on those? All those with hands-on lab we cover in an extensive eight-week program. And it's not just eight weeks. Then you have a lifetime access. You have one year on-job support, one year live interactive sessions, and everything, including mock exam. Including the hand, like the CV preparation, project work, so that not only you learn all this, but then get a job as well. And then we support you for over the next one year after getting this job. Also, these are the extensive step-by-step -step hands-on lab, 40 plus hands-on lab in this program we do, which we actually implement it. You have to do it by your hand onto the cloud account, so that similar to what you actually going to implement it on customer premises or customer cloud account. So, including. Also, we give you a 200 plus sample or 250 plus sample exam questions, so that when before you appear for the exam, you know that you're comfortable, so that you can clear the exam in first attempt. We also, as I said, help you with your CV preparation, on jobs, uh, like how do you prepare interview questions, what questions to expect, and so on. Now, as I said, everything, whatever I mentioned, this program has hundred thousands of guys have gone through before you have cleared the interviews. And are now working at multiple places um, on different countries as well. So now this is all to inspire you that it's possible for you guys uh, as, as well. Now, like okay, um, this is for certification, and as I said, this is all possible, guys, getting job or certification, whatever is your objective. Now, if you want to go, uh, I'll talk about this free class a little bit later. About if you want to go deeper into AWS Solution Architect, this program, there's a free class we do. Uh, we'll be talking about that free class in a minute. But before that, uh, let's invite Eva. And I'm going to, in, Eva, if you can take control, make session this session interactive, focus, ask questions. As I said, Eva is currently working with Google. Uh, she's, she's, she works with the top management, but she has done it right from the start. She started from, right from, uh, from actually implementing these things to now on a senior management as well. So she, she knows everything in and out from right at, from top. I'm pretty much same as I've done these things in and out. I started my journey as an engineer, doing all these building these machines, databases, migrating applications to a level where I manage projects, do an interview guys as well. 
So with that, uh, Eva, over to you. Let me make you presenter here. Uh, sir, I made her the presenter. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Thanks. Thank you very much, Atul. That was a brilliant start. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the people from different time zone. And for people who join from India and other parts of Asia, this is really late, but I totally um, appreciate the time and energy and resource that you had taken for your career. Tell me, how are you all doing today? Type in with one word. Happy, sad, sleepy, hopeful. Uh, okay, yesterday. I must say that, um, Eva, I'm excited because I, you know, uh, since you went to Google, you're busy on other things, but I know I enjoyed thoroughly your sessions in past, like uh, wherever I've interrupted with you on implementations and your help. So brilliant, brilliant. You're in for a treat. If you don't mind, can you share your screen as well? I think your screen is not being shared. Uh, yeah, I will share it okay. in some oh, brilliant. time. Okay. 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 Brilliant. All right. Yes, I'm the presenter, so I will be sharing it in some time. Thank you so much. And, and by, uh, the way, by the way, before I go forward, you're looking gorgeous now, as, as always. So, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Over to Ooh, you. People are fantastic, hopeful, phenomenal. That's awesome. Good. Amazing. Amazing. All right. So a little bit of introduction about me. I'm Evangeline Daniel. You can call me as Eva if it is really a tongue twister for you. And I love interacting with people right from my school days. I've started my teaching career very early. Even I was a student. I was an eighth grade student. And as and when I do very good in my uh, maths or any other subject, preferably the English grammar, I started teaching other people. And the very first time when I met Atul, I see a lot of values together. Our technologies, our talent, skill set, everything is different. But Atul, you said two years. We have been speaking for three and a half years. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not good at with numbers at all. Indeed, indeed. Uh, thanks. Tell me, what's your anniversary? I know you're not good you're at numbers. You're going to kill me now. <laughs> I think, I, I think. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, good. Good to see a lot of people here. There are hundreds of people here. That's great. So, a little bit of introduction. I'm Eva. I'm based in Bangalore, India. I grew up in, I was born and, you know, uh, I was raised in a small town in South India. How many of you know this place, Madurai? So I'm actually from Madurai and uh, where Sundar Pichai was born. <laughs> That's the only common thing between me and Sundar Pichai, apart from being in Google. So <clears throat> like most of you, I'm sure all of you are here because you're seeking something. There is something. You may be having a wonderful job already, but you're seeking something to push yourself to the next level, right? And that started very early for me. And I couldn't find much of resources. There was not even internet during the early 2000s. All we can see is some HTML pages, not even the uh, relevant content about IT. It took me almost eight years to figure out my career and then jump to cloud. So 2015, uh, I started learning cloud. I started with Azure as well, but now I'm a complete fan of GCP. <laughs> But yeah, the industry is heading towards multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. Both are different. I hope you all are aware of it already, right? These are some of the very basic common interview questions, which needs common sense. But make sure, how many of you are uh, holding a pen and paper? <clears throat> this is not just another Netflix show. Please write it, which is very good for your NLP. When I say NLP, it's not the natural language processing. It is a neuro-linguistic programming. So as and when I speak, take your phone, do whatever. If you are doing your uh, you know, uh, evening walk in the park, please do not listen. Sit in one place, take notes, because I'm going to spill too much of beans today. Yeah, way too much with a lot of interview questions. It may be a simple question, but I'm also going to teach you how to answer. Yeah. So please get the pen and paper. Do not tear it from your kid's notebook or your sibling's notebook. Just go get a pen and paper. And we are also going to do a little bit of exercise today as and when you, you know, we do. So it took me almost close to a decade to figure out my career. And we have been running behind. I, maybe Atul can relate to it. We have been running behind mentors, asking us to mentor us and then uh, paying huge money and travel across the city for classes, no online classes those days. So that's how we started our career. The main motto of today's session is going to be, we don't want you people to go through the same thing. We okay. want to 
Yeah, go on. Adul. Sorry to interrupt. Like you touched my one of the soft point I had because I, I I can feel that I had two times in my career happened this one when I was looking two thousand four five I just said early stage I uh, I had and I'll tell you I don't want to bother and are you going brilliant flow I'll tell maybe once I uh, once you cover some point because that's exactly why I started this whole thing two times in my career that completely transformed and both the times I got uh, I can correlate with you over to you I don't want to interrupt you but. I'll tell you maybe because my own story, and I'm sure hundreds of guys who are already here will correlate with that. But they are in for a treat. I'm not going to bother you after that, and not break the flow. So over to you. Oh, by the way, a couple of questions are coming. How, like, uh, guys, ask questions if you're on Go to Webinar. Ask question in the chat window. I can see all the questions. I'm going to pick up answering as whatever I can the behind the scene. Um, if for some reason if I find some questions good, I'm good or not good. Like basically, it's simply it's applicable for a lot of other guys. I'll probably at each logical point I'm going to pick that. Um, also, second thing is if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn, we'll be answering them as and when I find time or my team will find time as well. But make sure that I'll make sure if you're watching this as a replay, we'll make sure that we'll answer questions as well. So make ask as many questions uh, you can. You're not going to get um, someone like Eva on quite commonly like this. She's pretty, uh, uh, you know, brilliant uh, resource and pretty expensive resource as well. Uh, so she's doing it as as as, as a help uh, to help you guys. But again, uh, she, as I said, is she she's not doing it for money. She's doing it for to help. But she's very busy. So you're in for a treat. Um, uh, and 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 thank you very much for Eva for doing this. Over to you. Cool, cool. Yeah. So the main motto of today's program is like we want to be available for you. Like when we were looking for some help. We are the people currently, uh, you know, uh, we can make ourselves available for you to help. And I see one question from Tika. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What route will be the best for me? Exactly. This is not just going to be only the interview preparation. It starts from the preparation of your career itself. Before even, we will do one more step before and we'll go one more step before and we will also start from understanding the entire career landscape. Um, we haven't started sharing our screen. I hope you all can hear me and see me. That's why I'm not sharing. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, if people are there available, if you can turn on your video, then it would be very interactive. I'm not sure if I will be able to see you. But oh, no, so we don't allow that video. Otherwise, it will be because there are so many. It will be become very, very complex, um, Eva. So no problem. sorry for that. Yeah, because uh, this is this is like um, a, a lot bigger than we usually do this session. All Over right. Cool. cool. So I currently I've been in IT industry for almost 15 years, a little over 15 years now. And I started with traditional data center technologies of working inside the data center with, the, with a lot of bare metal boxes of servers, storage, networking and uh, amazing people. I see Dinesh. Dinesh is here. Dinesh taught me amazing networking. This is almost uh, more than a decade back. Hi, Dinesh. Nice to see you here. And I see some of my ex-colleagues as well here. And in 2015, I started my cloud journey. 2016, I started uh, my partner journey with Microsoft. I will explain what this partner ecosystem is. And as I said, we are going to discuss a lot of business-related things, write out everything so that somewhere your brain gives it to you when you are attending the interview. All right. <laughs> And currently, I'm with Google. I've been with Google for almost two and a half years. And um, it's been an amazing journey, really an amazing journey. And I'm, a, I'm one of the uh, senior program. I joined us with this title, Senior Program Manager, which is actually an ops partner operations. We handle the managed service. Pro I particularly handle the managed service provider for India. And uh, I was the first employee to be in this particular space of the business. Yeah. So with this, that's all about me. And the rest of the one and a half hours is going to be you, um, only about you. I know there are hundreds of people, but be all yours. It's just one on one. So for Ahmed, it is just you and me. For Kone, it's you and me. For Balaji, it is you and me. Just think it is a one on one session. Write down everything. Don't think that somebody is speaking and there may be a lot of people who may be paying attention, who may not be paying attention. And I can just do critical listening, selective listening. I can also open one more browser window next and then check 
how many of you are having extra browser windows checking instagram facebook and youtube close down everything yeah. this yeah no thanks uh, eva no i think this is very very important guys bring come back uh, and um, eva while you start your sharing your screen i'll take three questions now uh, guys if you're multitasking come back because i've done that mistake myself multiple times and i don't do any more i only focus on one thing let me take three questions as i said eva said we wanted to do one on one so think of it as a one on one session three questions i'm picking up on very these are very generic questions uh, first one is saying uh, mahesh is saying Uh, that I have 15 years experience in BPO backend uh, operations, and I want to move into cloud computing. And I've done my MBA in operations and production. So, is it possible for me to in car- cloud career? Or uh, and second question, which I see come again and again, is that oh, I don't have any experience. Then how will I get a job? Uh, first of all, anyone and everyone can move into cloud, and that's what I've done. I started with my background is mechanical engineering. I moved into IT as a database administrator 20 years back when everyone said that you can't become a DBA. So if someone says if someone says you can't do it it's 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 wrong they may not have tried it you can do it and it's very easy these days to move into cloud because you because it's still at very very a young stage on on cloud and now the next question comes is which cloud i should book is it I aws i can add one more point to the previous yeah. question uh, of course i'm an ex microsoft and currently working for one of the uh, company which is considered to be the land of engineering but here is the uh secret i don't have an engineering degree i come from physics background brilliant no indeed indeed yeah i exec did i leave uh, I it was i think i left i, I think i lost your uh, audio no so okay no absolutely so i think it's not totally possible second question comes is uh, if i'm a complete beginner which cloud i should pick now based on if you know nothing about Uh, uh, and you're not doing any anything, and you don't have any experience on any IT uh, background, then maybe begin with AWS because they are the biggest, uh, the 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 most in demand, and have the biggest market share. And then what I see number two is uh, Azure, and this is I'm talking about my own personal based on what we see around after teaching. You can go with Google, you can go with Oracle. I started my journey with Oracle because I had Oracle background. So if you're already working as an Oracle as a DBA, then might begin with Oracle. If you're already working on Microsoft technologies, then maybe begin with Microsoft Azure. If you're already working on AWS, or if you already have a project in AWS or any cloud, pick that cloud. Whatever you do, pick one cloud and go for it, and then always add. Uh, and I think uh, if I, uh, I'll cut down on the short on the questions because I only have 30, uh, 90 minutes more, so I want to wrap it up on time as well. uh so we'll and then we can have more sessions if if it goes yeah. uh so we'll cover that uh there are lot many questions are coming um uh, on here uh so let's let's continue from here o- over to you eva there is a, there is a dedicated q and a session at the end wherein i have put common top 10 common questions not the technical questions technical questions are like hundreds top 10 common questions where people usually lose in the management round a lot many people are able to clear the technical round but they lose their you know chance in the management round so i put some of the questions at the end so wait for those questions if we haven't covered it and then you can type in your questions so let me know if you if you're able to see my screen and also the jam board i i, I wrote a hi in the jam board can you see that cool all right thank you very much for confirming let's move on to the topic then all right in today's session we are going to cover a lot about the general cloud and the four different phases of interview the interview preparation it starts from even if you don't know what exactly even if you're not prepared to even give the interview you you may be new you may be completely new like me i come from the physics background and somehow i figured out back in the middle mid 2000s right and i know people who is doing brilliant in cloud career who come from the hotel management background and i know a lot of people who come from i know one person who came from fashion industry i'm sure if you are very active in linkedin especially in the gcp space you know whom i'm talking about 
So today's session is going to be beneficial for the individual contributors. You may be technical, non-technical, like administrator. You may be already in cloud or not in cloud. It doesn't matter. You may be working in a private bank in some of the back office operations. It doesn't matter. Today's session is for you. And I'm also going to cover a lot of points for the frontline managers or the first line managers who are usually the team managers. You may be a tech support team manager, project manager, ops manager, <coughs> agile coach, whoever you are. So we will be covering uh, you as well in today's portion and mid management professionals. I so love the mid management professionals. Do you know why? Because most of them are not happy. Here is the place wherein you actually get into the career midlife crisis. I'm going to touch some sensitive points today. Do you know why? I have been laid off once. Yes, career is not always up, up, up and up. Very quickly, in few seconds, I'll tell you about my layoff story. After my second kid was born, I, I, I'm a mother of two daughters. After my second daughter was born, I took in India, as per the government norms, we have six months of maternity leave. So the first day of seventh month, I was super excited to join the company and uh, packed everything. And I went before going to uh, my uh, my floor, there is a common restroom uh, in the reception. So I went, I actually took a selfie. I still have that photo. I was super excited. That day I lost my job. That day my position was closed. I was a proper, I was entering into that mid-management. So if at all you had any such experience, I feel you. Yeah. If I can bounce back, Anybody can bounce back. So we are going to give you uh, give you some tips for mid-management professionals and also especially career guidance, how to save yourself in this period. If there is a recession which comes, how to save yourself. And I'm also going to touch the my favorite crowd, freshers. Yeah, a lot of freshers and college graduates. You may be a student, even if you're 12th standard, even if you're in 12th standard, trust me, there are some of the... Uh, developer group conferences that I had been a part of, wherein 12th standard people, high school people came in. They are my favorite group of people. So I think the mid-management and freshers, I love them equally. And <clears throat> why are we not going to cover senior professionals today? When I say senior professionals, anybody with about 20 years, the context, the dimension, the topic, everything changes for them. Why? Because I'll tell you in a few minutes uh, the life cycle of a career. After 20 years, you actually get into the third life cycle of the career. Wait for a few minutes to hear about life cycle one and two. Wherein mostly you have to do some financial impact to the organization. It's not just how to, uh, how to attend interview, how to carry yourself, how to prepare. For them, it's always about the strategy planning, and then the implementation, wherein a lot of the magic lies in execution, right? That's pretty much what I do for Google. So I'm actually not covering much of the business strategy and planning, how to operationalize your business plans. These are some of the things that we are not going to cover today. Having said this, I'm also going to start with a disclaimer. This workshop is not to train you for any specific organization. Sometimes at the end of the workshop, people come and say, hey, can you refer me in Google? And is this are these questions, to, if I go through these questions, will, you, will I actually crack the Google interview? Not really. This is nothing to do with any organization. And the content that uh, Atul and I have put together is purely based on our own experience. And uh, this is not the forum to ask for referral. So be in the listening mode. You will learn a lot. You're going to take home a lot of things today. Keep your pen and paper ready. I again insist you might get the recording. There is YouTube live. And this goes to the remaining set of 2GB materials that you have been collecting for the last eight years. And you will never get time to go through. So pay attention now. Even if your brain keeps going <coughs> somewhere else to check how many people have liked you, uh, your picture in the social media, or thoughts about somebody. No, just pay attention to this, this one hour. This is very important. Having said this, uh, we are going to stop. Sorry, sorry to interrupt on that. One more, uh, I think there's a comment coming from Dipali, which I would definitely love to come. And this comes again and again on our programs as well. That one more category for someone who is uh, starting career again after a break. And most of ladies I know have, and I've seen multiple, I can remember of Raj Lakshmi and one, my neighbor as well, that let's suppose they are, they take a break for maybe career for kids uh, or something. 
how they can re-enter into this, what you have done, what you would suggest for that. The only thing I can think of is, or which I uh, it has worked is, don't focus that you have a gap, just be genuine, but make sure that you learn these things, whatever you are going to go into. Don't expect your employer to teach you. Cloud is so, so beautiful and you can do everything, learn everything on, on, on cloud without having to buy servers and do things. You can learn all these things. Go with prepare your CV and highlight saying that, hey, I have a gap, but then I have done these, these, these things. Uh, whatever the labs which I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show it to you again on that labs. If you're coming into technical side, I'm, I'm talking from the technical side, management side will differ slightly as well and, and, and accordingly, but you can always come back uh, gap. But uh, Eva, when you're doing it, maybe cover that point as well. Someone who's restarting their career after a gap as well. Yep, over to you. Okay, so Deepali, can I tell you a secret? Yeah, exactly. When compared to, <laughs> it's not for others, so don't tell it to anybody. When compared to other people, if you are restarting your career after a, um, after a break, if you may be a parent, you may be a man, woman, anybody, but you have taken some time to take care of your family for, uh, you know, a care, maybe a caregiver leave. If somebody is going through chronic business in your family and you have taken one and a half years to take care of them, companies have a special entry for you. So more than the general drive, you have higher chance of re-entering into the workshop, uh, workforce. So all the very best and congratulations in advance, Dipali. <clears throat> all right. So having said that, we are going to uh, get into the content today. Okay, so landscape, what is landscape? Let's say one of your friend wants to take you for a surprising trip. It's going to be a seven day surprising trip wherein they are going to be uh, your sponsors. You don't have to spend anything. You just have to chill. You just have to apply leave or just chill. And <clears throat> you're very excited about it. When, it. when the time comes to pack everything, that is when the confusion starts. Is it going to be an ice cold mountain or is it going to be a hot sunny beach? How should I pack? Yeah, you're going to go, you're going to pack. This is pretty much going to be the confusion, no matter how technical are you. I know a lot of people out there. I am in the hiring panel of Google. So I know a lot of people who will do amazing in the technical part, but somewhere the bigger picture is missing. The wide things are missing. The next 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, I'm going to give you a lot of things. You have to write it. Yeah. I'm going to give you a lot of things and somewhere you will cover it. And that's the landscape that I'm talking about. Yeah. Understanding the cloud world. Yeah. What is this cloud world? And we will start from the digital transformation itself. What is this digital transformation? Cloud a lot many people think that cloud is just administration. And there is one category who thinks cloud is only for developers. And there is one more category who thinks cloud, I think it is mainly about the connectivity. Then another category comes and says, hey, no, wait, it is bridging the infra and also the dev, and we will call it as DevOps. So what is this cloud world? We are going to dissect the cloud world completely. In case if you are already in the cloud, probably this is the time to pivot and think, am I in the right side of the cloud? I know we are all in the rocket ship, but are we in the right seat? That is one thing that we are going to discuss today. And the cloud center of excellence. All we see as a fresher is, I just want to get into cloud engineer role, DevOps engineer role, security engineer role. I just want to be a developer. <clears throat> After five years, time goes by. You move from one company to another company as an art, uh, as a uh, as an engineer, as a DevOps person. Is that? Do you think it's career? It's just switching jobs. You're just switching job from one company to another company. You may be a escalation manager. You may be a tech support manager. And if you keep jumping from one company to another company, it's the same designation, same set of skill set by just mastering the art of interview. It's not career, it's a job. And why do people do that? Because they have lack of awareness about the entire cloud center of excellence. What are all the roles? What are all the levels which are there? There may be at least 30 to 35 designations within cloud center of excellence. Alas, people don't know that. So get to know today, yeah? We are going to hear in cloud center of excellence, you are going to write down and do some exercise today. And that is going to make you think, 
or rethink which part, which direction or the route of cloud that I'm going to take. For sure, we are in the cloud ship, but which route that I'm going to take. And if you're already in, in around five to 10 years of experience, some of the factors to consider, there are some very interesting perspectives that I'm going to give you. And cloud vendors, who are these cloud vendors? Who are the partners? Who are the customers? All the companies, all the organizations in the world can be put into only these three buckets. But do you know what is the definition of this? Do you know how to find them? Do you know what kind of roles do they have? The roles that they have, the departments, the cloud departments within their cloud center of excellence that they have is different. So we will get to know that. <clears throat> and the types of employment, part-time, full-time, contract, freelancer, yeah, um, hybrid or whatever it is. How are we going to choose it? Now, you are going to stitch through all five. I'm going to only give you a hint today. You are going to stitch through all five. Moving on to the Jamboard. Can you all see my Jamboard? Yes, we can. Um, yes, we can see Eva. Thanks. All right. First, we will start with digital transformation. You might have heard about this 1,000 times, but the definition is totally different. The phase one of digital transformation, it could be, see, the meaning is different for different companies. If a company runs only on papers, the physical papers, moving those papers into a computer itself is a digital transformation. A lot of police departments yeah, and government offices across the globe are in this stage of digital transformation. They have been converting their actual physical papers to the, you know, the computerized, they call it as the computerized project. And this could be a digital transformation as well, an entry level. As in when I speak about this, just note down where exactly are you at. The next level of digital, now this is the level one, right? Level one is about from paper to computers. Now the level two, excuse my handwriting. So the level two is, from the computers, yeah, it may be the traditional data centers to the cloud. Yeah, it is in the traditional data center. I have some service. I worked with one of my previous company wherein uh, we handled a customer whose data, 45 terabytes of data, was spread across 700 locations in the, across the globe. How messy it is. 700 plus, which means that they don't even track how many actual location it is. Yeah, as in when the business grow, somewhere we didn't move to the next maturity level of the digital transformation. So the traditional data center, yeah, we are completely computerized, but it's all tradition in the on-premise within the bare metals. It's not necessary that they have to move 100% to cloud. It can be multi-cloud or Hybrid cloud, a very basic interview question for freshers, multi-cloud. Multi-cloud is giving your data to three or four different cloud vendors. Hybrid cloud is a mixture of on-premise plus multi-cloud. Yeah, on-premise plus any one cloud. That is the difference between these two. So if, you, if there are any of the freshers who are new to cloud or experienced people who are new to cloud, pick up a separate paper and write down only questions. Yeah. And that's how you prepare for the interview. This is how you write and prepare. People who write, they actually remember a lot. Now, the level three of digital transformation. My data, I am a digital native company. I have everything in cloud agnostic or it may be cloud native. <coughs> but the data, am I getting into, am I getting some business insights from data? So it may be a digital native company, but getting business insights from their data and then convert it into a business. Yeah, the IT department is always a supporting team of many things, many other departments. The, uh, the world across runs on different verticals, manufacturing, supply chain, finance, government, retail, e-commerce, all of these bunch of verticals. IT is just a supporting department. If you think IT is the whole world, not at all. Let's say you don't know anything at the end of today's session, you realize that I think IT is not my cup of tea. I don't like infra, I don't like DevOps, DevSecOps, MLOps, whatever they speak about, I don't like any of it. You still have a long way to go. There are many, many other verticals. 
yeah from being a digital native company to getting bins, uh, business insights and then the level 4 of digital transformation is about artificial intelligence where in the machine learning deep learning everything comes into picture to enable humans if you are already working in a company where exactly are you at write down take just few few seconds time i'm just going to give you 5 to 10 seconds time <coughs> think about it do not think later don't think that tomorrow i will think about it and right now today today we are going to do a lot of exercise today pay attention yeah let me see the comments as well guys um uh, whatever i see a lot of guys um um coming uh, they are very very specific people are talking about aws as well but they are not giving generic uh, so is it uh, what what role do you want to put put in the comment uh, as well and maybe if you can have a specific question that will be nice as well ask a specific question from them so which level put in the comment window guys and then we need to move on quicker solution architect so arun is saying solution architect so which solution architect in um in aws as your do you have have you picked up again my suggestion what i would do is this is this is good but i would also go on a very specific uh, cloud so pick go very specific cloud and then so i think there are a lot of uh, solution architect solution architect aws solution architect google solution architect specifically to move to azure cloud architect um as well yeah yeah so at the end of all five questions you will have much more clarity this is just an introduction wherein we are actually doing um this is just an introduction about digital transformation because we also need to cover a lot of pressures and people who come from different backgrounds as well okay the next thing is the cloud world now why did i say cloud world trust me true to the name it's actually a big world now let's see how cloud had started yeah back in 2005 or 6 when aws came it was mainly about infra infrastructure hey do you have some bare metal boxes don't worry about it just <clears throat> rent out our space a lot many people are in infrastructure nowadays but i want you at the end of this today's session i want you to think about this with a pr fresh perspective infrastructure when i say infrastructure it is a combination of compute storage networking storage is not data it's only choosing the right infrastructure product and a lot of administration jobs come here i see one comment wherein that you have been an infrastructure person for almost 20 years what is next 20 years is too long i don't mean to stay, scare anybody here but i want you to give genuine feedback to people the session is not to you know be very conducive to your own comfort zone <clears throat> to 20 with 20 years of infrastructure you definitely have a lot way to go there is one dedicated slide for it so don't worry about it we will cover and then there is the second category wherein there is the development development happens wherein the, uh, the the department is full of developers they do data intense applications they build data intense applications and a combination of these two will be your devops yeah to bridge as if you are a developer so this is why i'm telling you the infrastructure is slowly getting divided into multiple boxes and moving to different world infrastructure so a part of infrastructure if you are a developer you should know how to build your own infrastructure that way you become a devops person right and the third one is about security which is a hot career yeah which is really a hot career now can i directly get into security mm, yes theoretically yes practically you have to be very strong in networking to become very good very good security engineer and also the complete infrastructure why because security covers only two aspects the data at rest and data in motion what is data at rest the one which is stored in cloud and also in the on premise the data in motion the data which is always moving via networking most of the time the data is in motion so you have to be very strong in networking to have the security career straight away starting your security career probably later on you will feel, you will get little bit of hiccups the fourth one is data the new oil isn't it now data within data 
<clears throat> we have 10 different departments people it starts from data collection and data fragmentation until data visualization now each and everything is a different department different career all by itself not just one career within data now over here if you are a data person you should be able to choose your own infrastructure now the second box of infrastructure is come here if you are a security person you should know about infrastructure so infrastructure we already lost three blocks of infrastructure the final one is <clears throat> something which is widely spoken but not very well matured i would very confidently say that we just do statistics coding and mathematics and call it as uh, the combination of all this and call it as um, artificial intelligence now but somewhere i feel that the next generation can contribute more to it while we prepare the environment for them see we started exploring cloud and data and uh, um, you know cloud native applications why because our previous generation had um, invested a lot of time in building the compute in evolving the compute we, they they started with mainframe and then they gave they uh, they kind of invented pc the the client server era and then virtualization came in and then cloud came in now the last 10 years cloud became stable and that is when we are able to innovate a lot now i think throughout our generation it is the combination of the all of the things that we have discussed plus enabling the next generation to contribute more towards ai and ml so this is the entire cloud world now having said that this is also one of the top level um, distributions not really getting into it so one we have come one level down we started with digital transformation so everything is connected as and when i speak just try to connect it with the previous topic Digit which level of digital transformation are you in if you are already within cloud where exactly are you if you are not in cloud where do you want to go <coughs> Now, a combination of these gives different, uh, um, these are the basic, these are the fundamental departments. A combination of this is like DevOps, DevSecOps. Now, put some, uh, put some uh, you know, uh, predictive analysis to it. DevSecMLOps, people keep coming up with different types of operations, right? And uh, bear in mind, any kind of ops, you need to have some management flavors. That is when you can actually grow in your career. Now, let's see what is the next thing. Cloud center of excellence, the very important and exciting topic. I have a particular slide for this. If you see <coughs> this, this slide, this is how, the, and this is a top level distribution. The CTO, chief digital officer, chief information officer, all of the C suits are in the top. No, above one level above is the CEO. And there is this list of vice, uh, EVP, SVP, vice presidents. That is the leadership bucket, right? Wherein they may not be technical, but they know they are responsible for strategy. They know where to, which direction to direct you, which direction the organization should go, where all can they save money. And they come up with strategy and planning and which, come, uh, which slowly uh, help them to enable their management. Now, the management layer, which is getting shortened, I would say. At one point, a big organization, if you take a big service-based organizations like TCS, Wipro, Cognizant, all those uh, ATOS, all those big uh, global system integrators, there is this list of seven to 10 layer of management. I don't know for what, try first level manager, second level manager, and then there are some lot of IC managers, and then there is this group manager, and then there is this associate director and director. How many levels of management? Trust me, once again, it, uh, I don't mean to scare you, but the management layer is coming down. Now, this is the traditional one. When I say traditional, we are still following the traditional. In a few minutes, I will give you a very interesting perspective of how the future organization is going to be. When I say future, in another five to six years. And then a pool of tech resources. Now, take a screenshot of it. Draw this in your um, paper. With this, we are moving to 
the different designations you know which were which part of the cloud world that you are going to be now let's move to the designation sorry i think i picked up some other jam board wherein i had always written so i'm clearing the frame <coughs> no worries uh, 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 thanks for this uh, so far just quick uh, i was give uh, like uh, coming back on to those who are multitasking guys uh, and also a little bit of feedback is it all making sense i see a lot of questions are coming i'm trying to answer as much as i could and if your question is not being picked apologies for that those especially from i'm doing on my um here in go to webinar but maybe i'll picking up linkedin and youtube as well parallelly later and i'll ask my team to as well respond but is it all making sense just say thumbs up thumbs down or maybe rate it 1 to 5 5 being you're happy enjoying the session put in the chat window guys and wherever you are from uh, social as well so i can see uh i'm thoroughly enjoying this and this is something some of the things are picking up very very good um yeah There five five i'm going great brilliant thank you guys thanks you are making our day uh, and i'm going to buy coffee for you as well brilliant keep going um eva over to you okay there are two very important questions that i'm going to read but when the right slide comes during along with the logical flow i'm going to cover tabang i'm in, i'm starting a job as application support in a company what should uh, what skills should i learn um to position myself wonderful first of all congratulations that you are going to start this job we will see we will soon see that i will be answering arun certification will certification help me to get a job in cloud domain yes i will be answering these are the two questions that i picked up and i will be answering yeah and these are repeat questions like about there are a lot of questions coming about what hands on we should they should be performing because i think everyone is concerned that um i i and i totally agree the more you do work like workshop kind the more you do the actual hands on especially i'm talking in the terms of if you're doing more in the architecture side more on uh, uh, devops side developer side administration side uh, architect side uh, administration side support side that's where the extensive hands on labs over to you eva let's continue from here um oh. i'm also conscious of the time we only have one more hour or uh, guys uh, like 30 minutes or one hour how much time you want i think we initially i anticipated 90 minutes i'm happy to do one hour uh, like another one more hour um keep going over to you eva all right so the cloud we can have center. subsequent sessions if 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 people enjoy it and if we can't cover it maybe we'll have a follow up session as well on this uh, if i see in a demand based on this it's usually usually popular over to you eva let's continue all right so the third dimension the previous two dimensions the first dimension is digital transformation levels maturity level the second one is the cloud world which department within cloud do you want to be a part of now let's get into the designation of it the cloud center of excellence let's pick up the tech resources and the management resources i'm not going to pick up the leadership and the C cxos within the tech resource if you start your career most of the time you start as a cloud associate or a cloud intern these are all some of the designations i'm picking up yeah it can be any any other designation as well but mostly the cloud associate job or sometimes you even start with cloud engineer wherein what will you do you will not take any decisions you will mainly create pocs when i say pocs it's the hands on lab here is where the certification is preparing you if you are completely new to cloud you need to have your certification not by just reading questions n number of questions are available clearing certification is easy but clearing interview is also easy will you be the best employee after you get into a job for this please do hands on labs few days before i logged into this k21 website and i was so amazed to see this kind of labs i was like why can't people make use of this they cannot only i mean it's not only about clearing the interview it's about being the best employee 40 labs 50 labs my goodness this is what is called poc pre proof of concept you know uh, when a, it's a part of pre sales there is a separate department within the pre sales uh, team who will do pocs repeatedly so you can also try cloud pre sales associate <coughs> guys pre sales is the money if at all you want to get maximum money it may not be sales it may not be technical it is the combination of both pre sales so uh, cloud associate is the first level where you will somewhere spend 0 to 2 years of experience and then eventually you will move on to cloud engineer wherein you will attach little bit of logical reasoning to it it's the same level of technical knowledge you have which you keep on you know it never see just because you get a get a job do not stop learning the day when learning stops 
eventually you will your performance drop down and your earning also stops you have to constantly learn for the first 6 months so, sorry 6 years every day and along with the technical learning slowly add few other things now uh, you got in, you are getting into a job as an application support analyst apart from your technical add little bit of reasoning to it an engineer always ask questions why am i choosing virtual machine instead of this particular um compute resource why this storage resource can we uh, move from monolithic to microservices do you, do you think this is the right approach for this particular um um customer so a lot of logical reasoning and also you do a lot of optimization and associate just do the hands on part but as an engineer you pick up whatever which is which is already done or you yourself it may be your own work but see how you can optimize this can i reduce a little bit of cost to this can i fine tune the performance how can i increase the security with any or any one of the can i do some open source project within the security a lot of optimization part so here logical reasoning is very very important and then you will the natural career growth now this is generally for cloud you may be devops you may be security so instead of c put that department security associate devops associate devops engineer and then architect here is it's not the one question as an architect that you have to ask is why yeah why am i choosing this and then how how can i stitch multiple products together and create a product create a solution it's not about products cloud has 150 services 200 services for you people come with a problem you cannot give just an environment you have to give a solution so you need to be very good in business sometimes you may not be good in linux you may not be good in hands on networking but you need to be very good in business and how can i do that please listen to the problems of c suits most of i'm sure most of you the moment an, an email come from your management you don't read it because for you it is unnecessary if at all from today from next monday onwards read all the management emails your leadership emails if you are in aws there is a youtube channel about know your architecture very quickly in 5 minutes a lot many cxo speak about what their problem was and how they solved it right and there are some of the same videos which are available for google cloud azure any cloud you pick up these videos are always available so as an architect get to know more about the pain points of other people and now from here onwards the natural growth of different levels of architect like a senior architect and a principal architect if you are in india probably i'll give you some of the indian salaries i know some companies who pay 1.5 crores yeah to principal architects they are unicorns and this is how a traditional coe looks like now if you go to startups simple <coughs> cloud engineer or cloud architect and then directly the cxo they will be reporting to cto or ceo and in even more small startups it is just one person of cloud engineer architect doing associate all the job and reporting to the cxo so where exactly do you want to work within cloud coe do you want to work in these traditional organizations big service based organizations where in the, the career growth is also a little bit slow you be an associate you wait for 18 months or 2 years to be over then you get promoted to engineer architect by the time when you are 8 years old uh, in the industry that's when you be a senior architect yeah or you have to break the chain and move to another company but in in companies in small when i say startups yeah in startups big startups you start out you started out as a, a cloud engineer and then you move as an architect wherein this architect is totally different from this architect <coughs> totally different over here you may not understand many things over here it's just you you are responsible your cxo do not have time to get into that so you will get into the proof of concept rfp request for proposal when you give your proof of concept customer give comes up with 50 to 60 questions i know i, I have seen one of the rfp with 300 questions you have to just browse through and check the documentation and attach the proof 
and also put your own comments on what you think and this can be used for you or against you so that's the level of exposure you have as an architect in a small company in a very very small startup let's say there is a startup with less than 10 employees you are the developer you are the infrastructure you are the security person data security person you are the one who convert the data into business insights everything is you they but they give you some designation some random designation now the question the common question that i get i don't know as and when you give more options i'm a bit confused don't worry about it once we finish the session pick up any five things get into micro experiments when i say micro i'll tell you i'll also tell you how to get into micro experiments micro experiments mean means doing certain thing for a short period of time maybe one month two month pick up a startup there are a lot of startups in the partner ecosystem who may not be able to pay heavily yeah you may be a student or you may have another job tell them that i don't need your money i just need little bit of stretch projects i can help you yeah go to an if nobody is ready to give but you have you have learned security go to the nearby ngo tell them that i want to implement some security to your website to your data i would love to arrange your data give little bit of optimization all i want is give me some certificate that is experience don't say that i am not experienced anybody can be experienced even if you don't have a job even if you may not be earning get into these kind of multiple micro experiments for 6 months you'll turn out to be a different person trust me your resume is different now that's about the tech role <clears throat> now within this cloud coe this we are still in the continuation of cloud coe the second level which is the management level in big companies there are multiple flavors of management the entry level management is going to be incident management you pick up if you you may be a support employee or you may be an engineer but, but pick up one of the incident um, i mean you, you pick up one of the one type of problem and you become an expert and you start handling escalations that's how you become an incident manager and when you see the trend the trend same trend of problems with certain other accounts you combine together and handle them together that becomes you become a technical account manager or technical program manager for them so different flavors of management are there but this is the traditional model in the new startup model whatever is your tech yeah you should be able to do little bit of people management and you drive you drive when i say drive it can be finance it can be people it can be choice of platforms it can be coming up with service and selling the service it could be anything and if you see there are some startup companies where you see five year six year old people they say they introduce themselves as service delivery managers amazing place to explore wherein in the big companies you have to wait in pipeline you attend interviews and that's how you move yeah and over here it's not the case so once again it is up to you on which what kind of uh, path that you want to take and that's about the cloud center of excellence now comes the most interesting part factors to consider there are some of the factors which are very important now you see geography what is geography to do with cloud cloud itself is global what, what, what do you mean by geography not every project originates and closes in the same region let's say if it is construction yes it it originates and closes in the same country you may live in dubai you may live in nigeria you may live in any particular city of india the project it may be a flyover project it originates and closes in the same cloud being a global one global technology there are some parts of the world which are dedicated for some job let me be very frank most of the projects originate from the united states so the project origin find out where exactly do you want to work i want to work in the project origin versus the operations there are many operational centers we call it as global competency centers right costa rica romania poland and um, dublin uh, if you come towards this side um, india india is a heavy uh, operation center philippines in china we have some operation center there are multiple mid to low cost location 
depends upon the company's budget they always keep their operations there for example you might start a company or you might work for a company wherein they generate the customers and projects in the united states but there is a huge operations in india there is this huge operations team which is in india and project closures when i say closure maintenance cloud is not just a closer closure part right when one once you move to cloud that is when the actual challenge happens like there is this pain point for all the cxos they call it as crops cost c r o p s c for cost r for redundancy and resiliency o for operations p for performance s for security i will repeat it in some time so these are the problems if all of their problems all of their uh, <coughs> anything which is which is spoiling their night sleep can be bucketed in these buckets cost redundancy and resiliency operations it can be people it can be process yeah people come and go the great uh, uh, you know the great resignation goes on doesn't matter your business should run you cannot tell it to your customer that sorry i cannot find people p for performance <coughs> s for security all of this starts after getting into the cloud so the project closures during the project closures monitoring logging huge projects come and this comes to specific type of countries so where exactly are you currently and which part of the projects are you going to be and then choose your geography accordingly do not say that ah everybody is moving to canada let me get that i see that everybody is moving towards singapore i also want to go the lifestyle is great lifestyle may be great but for your skill sets where exactly uh, are you positioning your skill sets according to the projects and do they have maximum openings there for it <clears throat> and is it a high cost or a low cost location eventually most of the high this is how business or runs right the high cost locations can be moving their uh, operations to the low cost or mid locations and vice versa also sometimes and the next thing to consider is engineering not every country is the land of engineering most of the engineering teams are based in united states for all the companies for google it's slowly changing we are opening up a lot of engineering centers in india but where exactly do you want to be are you going to be in the engineering team in creating something yeah or in the operations team to contribute something are you going to create or are you going to contribute what is your skill set for engineering you have to be very creative you have to be a developer of course you need to be well versed in multiple languages and then clear the interview and then have a career path and operations you say that i am not very good in you know hands on coding i will pick up anything else into data into ai into infrastructure network security find out based on that find out the center of excellence operations center of excellence cities across the world if you can type in location strategy for center of excellence you will get into a lot of interesting articles based on that if you are in the position of moving from one country to another country find out if this is the right move career stage a career is a 30 year old journey very easily you can move from 0 to 10 the actual it slows down in the second phase it even slows down even more slower in the third phase so 0 to 10 is the first phase 11 to 20 and then 21 to 30 do not keep this as a fixed number plus or minus 2 or 3 yeah you may be in the second phase but you are just eight years of experience what happens in the first, are you able to follow everything just a quick check yeah it's important guys are you is it making sense uh, as well or should we go a little bit slow slow a little bit fast is it all making sense flow is correct uh, so can you can you saying yes yes shaid is saying yes uh, come back again if i'm multitasking going well yes 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 people are following yes i understand great great yes good all this right is, yeah. okay Uh, now um uh, just a quick heads up guys uh, again uh, initially i think my plan was to do it 90 minutes eva had a vision of 2 hours i might we may not able to complete everything eva into 2 hours so should we break it down to have another session next week uh, at a logical point when do you want to cover that because i want people to grasp it as well sometime even you do a lot more it might mm. your your head might not be able to take everything so that's why i want i want to take some questions as well because these questions are important and then we answer them how many, people, so, uh, how many more minutes do we have atul okay so we 
if we look at 90 minutes, we have 10 more minutes. If you want to do and question answers as well. Okay. Uh, and then I wanted to break into 90, 90 minute session. We might add another 90 minute to cover because uh, you tell me how much more time you will need and we can do accordingly. Yeah, I want to take I the- I will need another one hour. Okay. So then in that case, what you do is you put it a lo logical point and then we'll take questions because questions are important. This is where I want to make sure that those who have come here, we at least cover their questions. Okay. And then we have another 90 minute session next week. So they, they're getting a bonus now. Instead of having a 90 minute with you, you're getting another 90 minute. And in the meantime, that will also help me I'll ask these questions. We'll put an email and say, guys, you've seen the quality now. Ask your specific questions because the whole point fun is about if we're asking answers specific to a person who are in that question and we cover and we might improve over this these uh, these as well. But you've done a brilliant job Eva for now. Guys, what do you think about it? Like, should we uh, let Eva cover all logical point? We take everyone's questions so that when you're coming here, at least your question is answered. And then we uh, you post remaining questions in over the next one or two days, whatever comes to your mind based on after watching this again and ask something very specific to you so that we can cover into the next and we'll do another 90 minute session. I think some people have con uh, confirmed that they are ready to extend the session because if it's, uh, it's <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm a little bit like, you know, me personally, because I had to go uh, for my, like, you know, I would already planned for dinner. So that's why I think I'm a little bit, yeah, split the session is better. Arun is saying, that is perfect. Kone is saying perfect. Let's finish. Willie is saying let her finish. Uh, another 40 minutes, Sahid. Uh, okay. I'm also conscious of that people not getting and after a particular time. Okay. Leave, Eva, I leave it to you because you are the boss here. Okay. You decide what is right. But make sure that you cover everyone's question, please. Yeah? Yes. Um, yes. What we have covered covering here. Okay. No problem. So for the topic, I think I need another one hour. Uh, most of the comments says let her finish. And uh, there's one, Arun says split the session, but uh, splitting is perfect. Another 40 minutes. Hmm. Okay, then let's do one thing. Let's split the session because I still haven't started my content. You know, it's context is important more than content. Yep. Always context keep this in interview also. Keep this in interview. When somebody is asking you a question, do not jump directly into the answer. Set up. How do you do farming? How does have you ever seen a farmer? Maybe the best quality of seeds. But if you just throw the seeds like this, it won't work. You need to plow the land. You need to put some manure. You need to water it well. And then that is context. And then put the content. Your content becomes suddenly 10x with the context. So we are just setting up the context today. And maybe I can finish off after setting up the context and pick up all the questions. And next week onwards, we are going to start with, or, I mean, next week, we are going to start phase one, two, three, and four. Focus only on interview and interview questions. Can we do that? Yeah, brilliant. I think that's what, uh, I think that will be great. And I'll take you one example of uh, in our, like in the program that we do, there's an interview preparation phase and the interviewer asks a question and without even thinking, I've seen when we do, do the mock interviews, people jump on answering without asking a question. Someone say, okay, how will you design uh, data migration? And even without understanding the customer, they simply say, I'll do this, this, this. And where that's when the interviewer will realize that, hey, he, the person has done bookish knowledge or they actually try to understand the business because then, for example, I'm just very giving a very simple example because I come across, I ask this question in, our, in my every mock exam or mock interview here in the program. But then the, you should always ask a counter question. I understand a little bit more background of the customer. For example, how much data do you have? How much downtime you can afford? How much, uh, what kind of a network latency do you have in your network and so on? I'm just giving one example like that. It was good to cover other questions as well. So it's going to be fun as well. Interesting. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Arun is saying, yes, sounds good. Uh, good, great, great. And Eva, let's, uh, um, we'll cover questions uh, uh, as well. What's being asked here. Raymond is saying, I have some more questions. I'm going to ask in Telegram group. For those who are not familiar, what is Telegram group? We will be asking. I'll be looking at the Telegram as well. Um, uh, after this, or I'll ask someone in my team to look at the telegram as well. Thanks, uh, uh, Raymond. Over to okay. you, Eva. Yeah. So, um, see, sometimes I know you have been reading through a lot of content and in the interview, you sound so confident and think that you are doing a great job. You will understand this once you're on the other side of the table. Atul and I have experience, years and years of experience in taking interviews. Within the first few minutes, we know what exactly is going on is this person coming up with bookish knowledge had this person actually got into a project and is that an individual project or a group project we can find out everything yeah uh, so do not underestimate the power of managers 
okay and then plus yeah. is it's always it's and also if you prepare well it's not like oh if i have not done the project if i have not actually worked on i won't be able to get a job i started when back in 2013 14 i had no i no cloud experience but then i actually did all of this in actual implementation of my own where i built a machine and i migrated that machine to cloud and 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 did it and i'll probably maybe next week next time i'll t- tell my story how i entered into and how, what i did maybe as i said um, i want to focus and i want to give credit to eva i don't want to steal any of your time but that's all possible don't think that it's not possible it's possible everyone who starts they will everyone will start with no experience but then as long as the more you prepare in advance the more hands on lab you perform if you're going into i'm talking just about the tech side of this management will have slightly different as well and eva is going to bring management as well there was one question about management how do we prepare for management we'll cover that as well and i'll try to bring something on management level as well next next week over to you eva all right okay yeah see if you think that if you keep saying that i don't have experience none of us have experience if we all have to do the same job like our first job the whole of country would have been either a developer or a tech support right there are a lot many things i started as tech then move on to management different flavors of management the last 7 years i've been gathering different flavors of management so it's all i'll tell you a lot of tips and also secrets on how smartly you can handle such kind of questions yeah it's all about how you handle how you carry yourself the other person might show a different face maybe kind of doubting your potential kind of thinking that should i really hire that person you we should convince that person you should take over the interview you are the boss in the actual interview okay so moving on to the career stage the very important part keep your pen and paper ready the stages of career there are actually four stages but as i said i'm not covering the senior professionals the stage 1 wherein you just have to be tech 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 yeah you, most of the time you may not have that eq to deliver some of the man- management skills so it's mainly about tech you want to start your own startup mostly you are in your 20s in the level 1 of your career right most of the time not always if a 20s person uh, start a company no matter how what kind of a blunder they they do the investors and advisors and uh, the board members tend to forgive that person so in your first stage it's always about being narrow this is the tech i am in i need to have in depth knowledge of it i may not have to expand my horizon i just need to have kubernetes knowledge or devops knowledge with different tools so the tech flavor slowly gets into tech plus management and that is when your second <clears throat> life cycle starts you may be very good in tech but you need to show little bit of flavors of management incident management handle some escalation de escalate customers you know people management enable people who are reporting to you hiring you get into a lot of other things and here is where amazing techies get into their dissatisfaction and the discouragement mode because the first one stage you know the stage one for almost a decade or 8 to 10 years they are into their own shell now you have to suddenly break the shell and come out and start being a, you know interacting with people and here is where a lot of techies techies say i'm an introvert i don't like to do all these things you have to do it and uh, that's nothing to do with your personality introvert or extrovert who do you think i am an introvert or an extrovert i am a 100% introvert just because i speak in such a uh, enthusiastic way it doesn't mean that you are an introvert so uh, awareness also have is very important what kind of personality am i at the end of the day where do you get your strength from when you are being quiet or when you are with people if it is the first category you are an introvert out of fortune 500 companies 490 company ceos call themselves as introverts introverts are great leaders you can do management really well because by default you come with that empathy when i say empathy when there is a problem just take yourself one step back think about it and then execute so eventually you have to move into management and then comes the 21 after 21 years of 20 plus years of experience here is where people get into the midlife crisis of their career why because and for some people it starts here itself for many for actually many it starts here itself 
And what do you mean by this midlife crisis, Eva? You're not motivated. You know, I'm just giving you some word clouds. Not motivated. Not enthusiastic to do the job. Don't know what is the next direction. Pretty much not engaged and involved in anything. Yeah. It says that Evangeline has joined the meeting. Mute, camera off. After 30 minutes, Evangeline has left the meeting. These are all some of the symptoms that you're getting into midlife management. There is lack of engagement and, and uh, you just do the same thing again and again. You don't want to talk to people. You avoid the team gatherings. Yeah, Don't avoid the team gatherings. If you, if you don't go to team, uh, team outing, then you are the topic. So be present. Make yourself available in this period. How? That is a one-on-one -on -one thing. So we made this, this talk. I mean, this topic is not really for it. I am actually an expert in the IC2 manager transition uh, uh, side of it. So what happens in the third stage? Tech plus management plus finance. You should be able to save some money for the company. You should be able to bring new business. It's not always farming. It says hunting. Yeah. In hunting, for, you know, what is hunting and farming? Farming is doing the existing job, keeping up the existing customers. Hunting is bringing new customers, bringing new business. Here is where people actually get very tired because your kids are teenagers and you may be having health issues. Your parents are getting old. Totally, you know, have this awareness. It's not just job, job, job interview. Awareness. That is why today the whole first one hour is dedicated only for context. When you are aware, you perform much better. <clears throat> So now, now, where exactly are you? Which stage of career are you in? Type in. Okay, it's important. Yeah, that's, let's see. Um, uh, put in, in which stage. And those who are on YouTube, LinkedIn, I think I'm getting a message a little bit later. Um, Tabang, one. <laughs> you just okay, described sorry. me. Yeah, yeah, I know. See, I've, I, I'm almost in the transition of two to three, right? In two to three, you need to look deep within yourself. It's not about what will I do? Who will I network? Networking happens here. Networking actually happens here. And the same networking, you should reduce it in two uh, to three. Okay. Uh, Eva, I can see a lot of one, two, one, two, second stage, one, two, one, two. But I definitely want to pick one question, which is, I think I, uh, I have gone through the journey myself, not on this. But uh, Raymond is saying desktop, desktop support for 15 years and bored and unmotivated. That is what we need to clear that, please. What a person who is working on a desktop support for 15 years needs to do. And when you say desktop, is it Windows desktop, Raymond? Uh, are you working Microsoft or you're doing normal desktop? What exactly? And what uh, what would you suggest? And because you're coming from Microsoft background, uh, Eva, uh, let's take this because uh, yeah, I... I, would I like you, yeah, because I used to do an apps GPA back back days, and then I did it for a couple of four or five years, and then got bored, and that's when I started moving into security. And then I got bored with security, then I moved picked it uh, on on uh, cloud. But it's not about boring or being boring, but I also visualize that that particular career is not going to be for long. Like anything we do within cloud as well, you pick one cloud, you begin maybe with cloud engineer or cloud associate, as he was telling, then move into the architect line, and then move into multi cloud. So keep learning every couple of years and new skills as well. So Eva, what's your suggestion for Raymond for his working and desktop support? Yeah. Absolutely. Before getting into the suggestion, Raymond, I'm going to be very honest with you. Desktop support for 15 years. Slowly, the usage of desktop is coming down. And this is why you are unmotivated. And if there is something which is not working, people just throw their laptop and get a new laptop. So your scope is coming, is narrowing down. On the other side, I'm just trying to visualize where you are and I feel you. I'm just trying to feel you. It's not just me speaking. I'm just trying to feel you, Raymond. Well, you see, I'm sure you might see all of your colleagues getting upgraded themselves and moving on here and there. And you keep getting, you keep working with some new people. So this might, you might miss your old people. Now, this is your current situation and this is why you are bored and unmotivated. Now, in order to be motivated, of course, we all need to have motivation. You should know where, where exactly you want to go, right? I'll tell you how to take that decision. But before even you start from today, forget the 15 years, start with, uh, if you're feeling guilty somewhere that I didn't do anything five years back, six years back, please start with forgiveness. With guilt, you're not going anywhere because people don't say that. But somewhere in your sentence, I see that guilt is hiding. So no guilt, first of all. 
fresh day today desktop support it has compute storage and network upgrade the desktop's compute to cloud compute upgrade the desktop's networking to uh, the cloud networking trust me raymond not many people in cloud who start their first job in cloud don't know on premise networking and i am sure you know all the types of cable troubleshoot everything physically and then you do a lot you are going to be the best of hybrid cloud person i really want to see you as a cl hybrid cloud person and if this happens in just 6 months i'm telling it to the maximum time period wherein it's uh, wherein you <clears throat> you spend only one hour just one hour every day so all this cloud um, uh, so de uh, desktops compute storage and network together you upgrade yourself as cloud administrator when you say administrator it is hands on and naturally you will very fast move into architect now that is going to be that should be your motivation start pick up pick up any cloud it doesn't matter pick up any cloud because you will understand everything very easily and a high five to you i started at my career as a desktop support engineer if i just want to add uh, i'm getting goosebumps because you may you made some i look back myself when i started in 2013 14 in cloud first thing i struggled was with networking i had no idea about networking i was struggling i remember when i reached out to you i asked what is ciders and that's when i started moving and realizing basic networking i had no idea about but within 3 months 4 months and I, my motto is everything is figure outable and i tell to every student that comes and say you can figure out very very quickly easily uh, just look at pick up things what is required and internet is so much like information available sometime it's overdue as well so focus on what's required at the stage for you and pick up that so uh, as i was telling you're already from microsoft background you're doing on windows maybe big begin with as your administration az104 raymond for you um i'll give you the list of hands on lab there are a lot of questions are coming how do we perform labs what labs we should be doing i have depending on whether you're coming from aws as your um i'll be covering in the next few maybe i think we'll make it a weekly habit of making bringing you guys here and giving you maybe do some hands on as well at least to kick start and then leave it to you on to see if you enjoy keep moving forward on to that brilliant uh, thank you very much eva like that i wanted to bring some new questions more questions as well but let's finish this and then we'll take a few more questions individual questions yeah address we are going to do when you're doing about hands on tell me whether you're talking about aws or azure so that i can specify and point you because uh, because uh we have done some uh, things written um, available on our website to say if you want to go into aws where should you begin with what do you do as well in the order in which as well maybe create a free trial account then do this and do that and do that as well okay and we'll try to do some hands on lab i'll bring some other experts as well who are good in eva is brilliant as well but i don't know whether she'll be having um those time as well but we'll bring other experts uh, on to the hands on lab maybe aws guys azure guys and then of course google when we do google for eva as well yep over to you eva all right rakesh i am a non tech project manager i want to move to tech project management very good project management has at least 7 to 8 different flavors of management itself within itself so all you need is just some skill sets you don't need by default you are talented with different types of managerial skills right so now you just need to pick up any one cloud now when you learn it i want you to focus more on why question why this why not that you may not need hands on how to create a vm how to assign a public ip don't get into the how part why ask yourself a lot of why question that makes you a slow and natural transition from tech to non uh, non tech to tech project management and then you also learn agile you will be able to my suggestion would be to get into devops because you are already good in project management there is a lot of devops people and companies who are in need of this agile project managers scrum leaders scrum masters and pick up the devops any of the devops course and also attach your cloud knowledge to it ask why question because the moment you come for management interview i will not ask what exactly where to click where where not to click which option to choose why why would you choose this why not this what can you give how can how much money can you save me that is how uh, how can you run this project in a much optimized way these are the questions which will which, is, which are going to be so for get into the technical but have a perspective of why yeah 
so i see a lot Thanks, of people sorry sorry to interrupt again on devops you brought out devops i think we are having a next uh, 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 shivansh uh, when do we have the devops session because we are also doing a devops because i see aws cloud azure cloud and then devops which is a development and plus operations implementation either an aws cloud azure cloud or or a on premise normal without cloud as well devops it's a methodology framework uh, we are having another session i'm i'm bringing another devops uh, expert uh, so stay tuned keep an eye on your inbox so once when do we have that session is it wednesday thursday uh, sir it will be on 6th of september i'll share the registration link in the chat as well so the people who are no interested problem. can directly register there great we'll put it in the email follow up email as well great over to you sure. eva thanks okay if you are somewhere between 2 and 3 and if you are actually having midlife crisis which is affecting your mental health please hire a career coach please talk to some people talk to anybody hire a career coach first and before that find out where exactly is uh, you are actually not satisfied is it job is it in the work is it the personal is it you yourself sometimes that is very important self care is very important you can't say that i am old why should i dress up nicely why should i put that extra colors on my face no yeah as and when you grow old you have to celebrate yourself only you have to celebrate yourself whether other people do it or not it doesn't matter you celebrate yourself your kids look up to you and you naturally spread that happiness around and move your body go exercise do something instantly it perks up some energy yeah no matter which stages of career you are in you know over here over here in my first stage i had my uh, breakup you know it was hard it was really hard i was young but i was not able to handle i was not able to handle anything else i was on calls and then i put on mute go to the restroom cry and then come back somewhere you have to motivate yourself just move your body pick up a new course study write and study don't just scroll 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 no that's not studying i'm not asking you to read study what is studying you you, you see something pause write it and then you once again do it and then you third time you do it fourth time you should be able to memorize and produce i'm not mugging up memorize memorize and produce that is studying otherwise you are just doing reading novel reading finally the transition from ic manager leader yes i think it's pretty much in alignment with the uh, career stage of 1 2 and 3 and <clears throat> another 10 minutes yeah so organizations what type of organizations do i want to be in now i have little bit of clarity on where exactly should i start my uh, car and which direction should i go organizations are you going to be in the it companies or the it department of non it sorry it's a typo it's non it companies both are equally good it doesn't matter one of my previous company i used to be in the it department of non it company we enjoy luxury because it's a marketing company so wpp is the name of the company it travel only in business class and on the on, on the bank of thames there is this office wherein from my seat if i look at it i can see st paul's cathedral and it's awesome so those kind of luxuries you get volvo volvo is an example right it's a non it company but the it department in that case there are limited roles you will be asked to do a lot many things so you have to widen your horizon but in it companies day in and day out they do it so you might end up doing the same thing again and again maybe 3 4 months you might get bored so these are some of the things but if you are looking for the first one wherein you say that ah if i get bored in 3 months that's okay that is when i get work life balance yes go ahead please choose that having awareness where exactly you want to be and then what type of companies am i going product based companies i want to work only in mang yeah meta apple amazon netflix and google that's mang companies right i want to work only in product companies why because i love the snacks <laughs> it could be anything it could be as silly as it can be because i love the policies that they have and i like the designations that they have i'll show you in the next slide what are all the designations that they have yeah what are all the departments that they have and then the next thing is service based companies you have clients day in and day out you just have to get into customer satisfaction all the system integrator companies with pro tcs uh, cts cognizant atos <coughs> all those kind of companies startups pretty much they are self sufficient they are doing something for their own use 
they they also the startups actual company is not it i hope you people know the difference between a startup and a business startup is a disruptive idea business somebody had already done and i am also doing it so if you want to create a service based company it's not a startup just because you start something new it's not startup <laughs> yeah so where exactly do you want to be everything has different culture yeah so based on that you can choose so these are all the factors that you consider i hope as and when you as and when we uh, make a note of it i'm sure there are some eight different dots that we have covered as a digital transformation the cloud world within cloud world which designation and then what type of company geography career stage organization seven things that we uh, sorry, yeah seven things that we have covered you are just collecting the dots think through and then connect the dots when you can when you collect all of this when you are able to decide yeah over here this is what i want to do it gives you a clear picture of where exactly you want to go now cloud vendors partners uh, and customers you are before before go i think probably i'll take a few minutes to cover the, our uh, sponsors aws solution accelerator program and then we'll uh, i'll probably bring you back on to discover this point um this particular point which is cloud vendors is that okay with you just i need 5 yeah. minutes to talk about the program which is talking about this is the, the sponsors oh, this for this uh, program uh, atul this is the last slide since we are in a logical flow give me another 5 minutes sure. time this is the last sure no problem yeah? okay carry on please yeah okay Indeed. one quick question did anybody purchase home appliance very recently in the last one month it could be fridge refrigerator washing machine cooler um, dishwasher anything <laughs> i did uh, i i did the uh, uh, gas like a uh, uh, like a uh, um <laughs> what do you call this <laughs> uh, <laughs> the okay. stove like basically the stove yeah the okay. oven oven and the stove yeah okay, okay. the context so, of this abdul, abdul had purchased an ifb washing machine so abdul i'm sure you might have gone to a reseller and purchased and not to the ifb manufacturing factory or the company directly right you went to the the reseller and I, what do you mean by resell true to the name they actually purchase it in bulk or in wholesale and then they put their own services extra charges support the post uh, installation everything and then they sell it across to you and when you go to that reseller not only ifb you also see bosch you also see samsung um uh, what are the other brands could be whirlpool anything else pretty much the same way the cloud partnership ecosystem works this is very very important because there are more roles in the partner ecosystem any cloud you take you be it oracle all the cloud companies work in partner ecosystem let's say here is the cloud vendor company when i say vendor it is aws uh, oh, sorry microsoft azure google cloud platform oracle all these companies are vendors it could be <clears throat> alibaba ali cloud anything anything so what they do is here is the partner ecosystem world they are nothing but they are none other than resellers they get it from the cloud vendor and then they sell it to the pool of customers now within this customers they have the enterprise customers instead of one washing machine you want to order 200 washing machines you are an enterprise customer and then you are a corporate customer mm, i think somewhere between 20 to 30 washing machines and then the smb small and medium business the same way cloud also works you are here giving them um double x and triple x millions of business over here it's hundreds and thousands of dollars over here it's less than few thousands of dollars now let's say this customer let's take this customer they want to purchase 1000 virtual machines they cannot go to google directly or microsoft directly they go to a partner how many of you know from wherever you stay physically how many of you know in the same city how many partner companies are there i'm going to give you some exercise all of us are all of us love browsing through and surfing through the internet let's do it in a structured way pick up your city go to aws website click on find the partner and find out how many partners have their office in your city move on to the next page go to microsoft page find the partner how many of them most of them are different different partners no names you may not even heard those names 
And sometimes people think that I want to work for a branded name. Trust me, with the partners ecosystem, you learn a lot. And just because sometimes they are no namers, they may not get people also. Here is where you get your internship. You may not have experience. You may be a student or after 15 years, Robert, what you can do is go find out who's the partner. 15 years of desktop experience. Tell them that I'm wonderful in on-premise networking. I can do anything. Can you give me a little bit of administration project? Every day I can do monitoring, logging. You want me to call the tech support of the people and find out what exactly is the problem I can do. Do this one hour every day. In one month, you will be a cloud expert. Why six months? I think I kind of underestimated your uh, on-prem skills. In one month, you'll be a cloud expert. While you find out and start working with a partner, do your certification simultaneously and find one mentor. This is going to be the 70, 20, and 10 rule. I know a little bit of off topic. 70 is on-job learning. Don't expect any money. Do not get into negotiation. All you need is experience certificate. 20% of certification, 10% of mentorship. A lot many people like me and Atul are available to mentor you. Provided you put the remaining 90%. Yeah, we want you to win, but that's just 10%. So this is how the partner ecosystem works. I want you to get into this exercise. Pick up all the cloud vendors website, find, click on find the partner or partnership, whatever is the keyword, but the keyword is partner. Yeah. Choose the location and find out how many offices are there. I'm sure there will be at least 20 offices if you live in a tier two city, not even tier one, tier one hundreds, tier two. Let's say you are in a tier two city, wherever you go, whichever country, there will be at least 20 partners that you find. This is the secret next step for you. No matter whatever you want to do, this is the secret next step. So this partnership, now, there are three parties, vendors, partners, and customers. Their businesses are different, so their departments are different, so the designations that provide are different. Cloud vendors are the providers of cloud. They have this engineering, pre-sales, architecture, services, PSO, yeah, professional services organization, and they also do support, a little bit of support, not always. Yeah, They provide, they outsource most of their support to the cloud partners. They are the accelerators of cloud. So you get into the, if you don't know anything, get into their support. You're new to cloud, get into their managed services. Tell them that I can do hands-on implementation. I think I see that your team is struggling with networking. I can help. Or can you also teach me the compute and storage of cloud while I teach you networking? Always offer reverse mentoring. See, I'm a very busy person. People message me every day. Can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? But there are some impressive messages which says, <coughs> Eva, can you mentor me on these, these, these things? And I can help you to learn more about Web3 or blockchain. Yeah, I don't have to go through everywhere. I just need to just sit, listen to a person. And I learn a lot. That's reverse mentoring. Always have something to offer to the other person. Otherwise, trust me, nobody is going to be interested in you. Because all of us are busy handling our family, job, business, mentoring people like you in general, one too many. If you are very precise, you need to have something to offer. And all of us have something to offer. Finally, the customers. Customers are the users of cloud. You don't get into engineering, pre-sales, all those. Their team is architecture to work with the partners. And then more of administration and monitoring. So the, the, their interview is heavily in-depth. So you cannot <coughs> get into the customer. If at all you are applying for a company or you're getting a call from a company, or if you're already working in a company, find out who are you. Are you a vendor? Are you a partner? Are you a customer? Get into general management. What is my, you know, the, there is this forgotten art of general management. You may not be a manager. You may be just two months in the entire IT field, but get to know what your company is doing. How do they get the money? What are their pain points? Where am I? Who I can impress? Get into all these five things. That is the way you accelerate your career pretty fast. Now, having have, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Having said this, we haven't started our actual golden content, but I strongly feel setting up the context is very, very important for you. I can very easily say that, hey, show me your resume. You have to do these, these, these things. And then you have to speak like this in the interview. No, it will, that's like giving you a fish. Atul and I are trying to do how to, I uh, trying to teach you how to fish. Yeah. Now in this 
we have i can't believe we have covered 46 slides in just setting up the context i'm sure you have little bit of awareness at least with whatever notes you have taken think through more about it and uh, understand more about you now the next week when you come for this session i'm sure you come up with better questions and today you might have started with very general question next week you come with better questions okay over to you atul no, so I want you to hang around for a uh, minute because there are interesting questions. And then I want you to give the homework, which I'm going to set as well. You've already uh, given a hint, but there's one more because I want people to start looking for the job before they start. I always believe in beginning with keeping and in mind. And I'll tell you, if you can make me sponsor, if my team can make me sponsor and stay around because I wanted to give you uh, the work, uh, or set the context in terms for the next week, make myself presenter to my screen. Let me know when you can see, see my screen. I'm going to talk in the context of the AWS, but the same thing is applicable for uh, the uh, the Microsoft Azure as well. Yep. So I think uh, Eva, you mentioned about a uh, couple of things which is very very important. We we the objective here is to teach you how to hunt rather than do hunting for you because we might help you once, but then we want to help you in in entire career how you can pick up and do these things in your like how you know how to do the fishing rather than we give you fish uh, by catching fish. Yeah. Second thing is, I always believe in beginning with keeping end in mind. And the end in mind is that, hey, I should have a job which I enjoy in cloud, what is going to be future. And it's not going to be just there, but on every couple of years, every one or two years, I keep learning and doing improving on that. That's the whole objective. So uh, this week, I'm going to set up some uh, task work for you. Keep an eye on your inbox in terms of looking for the job. And uh, and uh, she already mentioned about, give a hinted about the partner ecosystem as well. There's huge, huge opportunities, which it's difficult to fill. Companies are struggling. I myself have struggled for my own team, for our customers, because we work with a lot of customers. But then we, I can vouch, provided you do the hands-on lab, because that's very important. The, the workshops are very, very important for So um, today I'm going to talk about is right now here AWS Solution Architect or AWS Cloud Engineer, but same thing is applicable for Azure, Microsoft Azure, if you're going for Azure. Maybe I can give you the more context about Azure, but whatever we're going to teach in or learn on AWS, put a similar thing, but AWS Cloud or Oracle Cloud or a Google Cloud and so on. So what you do is you begin with, first of all, the very basic concepts about cloud. And within cloud, what you do is cloud service model, deployment model, which are very, very important. Cloud, there are three service models. There are three deployment models, main categories. Then what is the introduction of basic core services? You begin with that, and then you begin do with your hands-on labs. And you create an account. You go through the console, and maybe I'll try to cover a little bit, walk through in terms of Microsoft Azure, as well as uh, uh, AWS next week when we show, once Eva has covered her own part, or maybe we'll do a follow-up session, third session a week after, where we give you a little bit of walkthrough on this. So you look at setting up in terms of creating a trial account. All of these cloud give you a trial account. And most of the things that you want to do can be done in cloud account, free trial account itself. Otherwise, you pay very, very minimal fee, which is by upgrading to pay-as-you-go model. And you can do pretty much everything that you want to perform or going to do in, in customer implementations. So do these things like creating a virtual machines, creating a cloud account, creating a billing alarm to see how the alarming or notifications work for you. Then you begin with security or the users, groups, access management, authorization, authentication, and then the keys, etc. Then you do the storage. There are different types of storage that is available. So different types of storage in terms of block storage, object storage, file storage. And how do you do the data management on those storage uh, as well? Then you do the compute, as as Eva was early, uh, earlier telling, you can do virtual machines. So whatever machines that you're managing on-premise, now you can do same thing, virtualization on the cloud. You can also do something called as containers and Kubernetes. If you've not heard of another big word, world there on containers and Kubernetes, uh, big there. Also part of uh, like um, implementation of those. So how do you create a machines, Windows machines, Linux machines, Kubernetes instances, containers, and then connect with your networking, connect with your storage. How do you connect these machines? How do you connect with the storage? Are these hands-on labs? You log into these machines. Then networking, very, very important, especially if you're going for multi-cloud or your cloud administration, cloud architecture. So how do you create networks, subnets, load balancers, the firewalls, we call uh, VPCs and, and sorry, 
the network security groups, NSGs, and, and, and so on. How do you block the connectivity? How do you allow the connectivity and so on? Then you go for auto scaling, which means as the load increases, the beauty of cloud is you can build things on an auto scale model, which means as the load increases, without a human intervention, you can scale up your, whether it's databases, whether it's applications, you can do all of them. As the load in decreases, you reduce it down. So do those things, auto scaling, load balances, adding machines, and so on, deploying applications. Again, then more advanced networking, like connecting with on-premise, connecting with across other cloud, connecting with different regions within cloud. You can have a AWS cloud account in, for example, US or Europe, and then connect these two as well for, for different purposes, different use cases, uh, and firewall. Then you also do the databases, analytics. Uh, again, you don't need to be a DBA. You don't have to the database networking uh, expert. As long as you can understand what are the different database options. If someone asks you to create them, you, you should be able to create these different type of databases and so on. So there's just different services like Amazon Athena, Amazon Redshift, Aurora, all those things you'll be creating and performing these hands-on labs. Then messaging applications, uh, notification service, email service, uh, queue service, and so on. Then you also have configuration management automation, very, very important. Like you want to automate some of these things using tools like CloudFormation or, or, or Terraform. Manage them, logging, configuring notifications, and so on. Then once you have understood the basic services, all those things, then how do you design that? What are the building blocks of designing these applications if you're going towards the architecture side? Even if you're not going for architecture side, it's important for a cloud engineer to know things like high availability, disaster recovery, uh, resiliency, uh, the cost effective, making sure a you have a desired solution, but at the same time keeping costs to minimal value or making sure that these systems are secure. They're performing to a level which a business expect and so on. So those things. And then you do um, uh, like different type of uh, architectures. There are uh, AWS keep improving and, and bringing up with the design architectures. And then once you have done all these things, start preparing for the job. Do the, the mock project works or project work which um, companies do on, on, a, on a regular basis. For example, so pick one or two projects uh, so that you can talk in your interviews and say, I've done this work. And trust me, then if you do all these things, put down in your CV and say, I've done all these things. And then, um, and you should have actually done that. And once you perform that, you will feel confident of writing these. You should be, and that is where no doubt, uh, and, and I'm living proof of that. I have hundreds of students who have done these kind of things and are, have got the job as well. So as long as you do those things, um, getting a job is easy. But then if you go with doing nothing and you say that, oh, employers hire me, I don't have any experience, or I've, uh, I've just simply done the certification, but I've not done anything, they will not hire you, period. Right? So make sure you do all these hands-on labs and then cover it by an, uh, a certification because certification will help you in picking up your CV. Now, what happens currently is there are hundreds and hundreds of CVs I, we get. When, I, when we interview for our uh, customers, we we help our customers to build their teams. At the same time, I have also uh, seen that companies, when they hire, they get for the same role, maybe 100, 200, 300 applications. So how they, do they identify is by looking at the CV uh, first. So if you have certified, they know that at least you, have, you might have done something. But then certification will be to help you in your CV. The hands-on lab will help you in getting clearing that interview. And again, we'll, we'll bring our, our more questions like these on uh, specific questions on these interviews as well. So these are some hands-on lab, basic labs, which but I think pretty much everyone should do. Then identity and access management rela related, creating users, groups, roles, multi-factor authentication, creating keys to manage your certificates and so on. Then within storage services, different, different type of volumes, like block storage, object storage, buckets you might have heard, how do you manage the life cycle of your applications? Then within compute, you create maybe a Windows machines, Linux machines, containers, auto scales, and so on, load balancers. Then networking, creating a virtual private cloud, VPC, subnets, elastic IPs, DNS servers. 
from a monitoring and auditing point of view, do the, all the monitoring, auditing, logging. CloudWatch is for monitoring, for example, CloudTrail to de detect what's being done, and then config management and so on. Databases, again, I don't want to bore, and there will be a URL, we'll put it in email of all this, but if you want to go. And then also parallelly do exam preparation as well, as I said. So, and then finally, once you've done, maybe 50, 60% of uh, you are in, in your learning this, parallelly prepare, look for the job as well. And we are going to do a work like, so uh, the um, task for you, which is you need to identify maybe 10, 15, 20 companies who are implementing what you want to do, maybe Microsoft Azure, maybe uh, AWS, maybe Oracle, maybe Google. Pick those and see what are the job descriptions coming like. And as long as you know 50 or 60% of what an employer is asking in that particular job description, you're good. Yep. And this is, again, as I said, to inspire. Like someone is asking about how can I become a technical program manager? So for becoming a program technical program manager, you have to have, as, as Eva said, maybe less on how to, but at least why we are doing what we are doing or what all things a you when we become a manager, what all things needs to be done on an implementation. Understand them. If you're becoming data architect, then maybe pick up these basic concepts and, and, and look on data part or a cloud engineer and so on. Yep. So. With that, I think uh, if you're to go more deep into these things, um, we have lots and lots of case studies. You could go out to, uh, there's a free class that we do and I bring our AWS expert. The URL is ktoniacadby.com forward slash AWS SA02. I repeat, AWS SA02. Join this on how to learn AWS cloud and to get certified and get a better higher paid job. What we cover in this is that who should learn AWS? What are the common services? We do a demo of creating a S3 bucket and make the data available. You can restrict and allow. This is just a very simple use case, just to, just to show you. And then you can do other hands-on lab as well. We cover the basic services, then the certification, and the hands-on lab, which I've given mention. Also, there's a fast action, or there's a, uh, for all the action takers, there's something interesting inside that free class, which I'll be talking about. So all you need to do is pick up a date, which is next one or two days or three days and pick up enter your name email address and then click on and you can start going into this aws solution architect similar thing we have for AWS azure if you if anyone is interested we might be having some sessions on azure so we'll talk about that as well with that eva uh now one or two questions and oh before we move on eva uh what questions you have uh how can we attend for certification exam yamini uh how do i get the project to do address okay there's a lot many questions. Sunil is saying, okay. okay. So Eva, I think probably I'll pick up these questions and maybe uh, first, if you want to say, uh, if you have sp like specific questions, you might have seen, uh, pick up those and then we'll cover that. Yeah. yeah, probably I can start with Idris' question because I've already replied to you the part one of it. And this question is a continuation of it. His first question is, maybe if you're in a location wherein you're not able to find any partner companies or not much, maybe you're in a tier four, five, six, Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Do you have internet connection? That's all. People like me and Atul, we started our career without internet connection, right? And still, we made it a long way. So, Idris, start with any one certification. And I've messaged you. Once you have complete uh, hands-on lab, it's not only about the theory. Please focus more on hands-on labs. Go to Opsgility. Yeah, this is where I usually pick up my projects from when I was learning cloud a few years back. <clears throat> pick up any one project. They, in fact, pay you for the hours. Yeah, it can be the list of doing labs or it could be a customized course or it could be just the content creation. Do this, even if it is free of cost, even if they are not paying, please do this because it's an experience. And you don't need to physically go meet somebody. LinkedIn is always there. Network. The last seven years, I have stopped applying for any jobs. Oh, by the way, I haven't applied for Google as well. I got an invitation, which we will see next week, how to, how to actually get an invitation. For, uh, take a note today that you're not going to apply for any job. No, you're not going to. If at all, all these 100 people over here, you should not, after the session, you should not apply for any job. Next week, we are going to cover the very, very important point, 
how to get the invitation. So for both my Microsoft as well as for my Google job, I've got invitation. I haven't applied. So how to do that? We will see next week. And Idris, I'm sure you have your LinkedIn account. Strengthen the LinkedIn account. Start putting certifications. Start doing something. Tag people. Atul and I all have a lot of connections. So tag us. Tag the institute. So that's how you slowly expand your connections. And people get in touch with you for projects. Put it, put it as open to work willing to get projects and so on. It doesn't happen within one month or two months, but don't lose hope, keep doing it. The next immediate step is learning. Pick up any certifications, clear the certifications, be very well versed with 25 to 40 labs. And I'm sure there is a lot of handholding happening with Atul and team on how to do the lab. Even if you're getting stuck, the team is helping. So this is nothing but experience. Start writing about your experience. Do not just share third-party <clears throat> links. Write your own experience. Hey, everyone, this is my 10 days study schedule of cloud. This is what I'm going to study. I'm sure at the end of the day, you'll get three likes. It doesn't matter. Keep writing. Keep writing. Yeah. So this is how you expand and network irrespective of geography. It doesn't matter. Even if you don't have any companies in that region, talk to some of the startup founders. Via LinkedIn, tell them that you are happy to contribute two hours every day and you are not expecting anything but the certificate. People are there ready to give you. You know, a few years back, I did internship in a startup because I am well versed. I am from the management side. I was not new to training. Yeah, maybe Atul don't know, Atul don't know me at that point of time. I did a two months internship in a training company. It was like very hectic, but I'm thankful that I did it. I was an intern. Imagine after 15 years of uh, 13, 13 years of experience. This was like three years back. After 13 years of experience, I went and joined as an intern in a company. Do this. No ego. Do it. You need it. No, I think you nailed. Uh, you were brilliantly uh, uh, explained and brilliantly. You're spot on on the on the point about the getting an internship. Uh, guys, again, a lot of guys come and ask and say, hey, after doing this program, how much I can earn? I always believe and I uh, that uh, I always say to them that is never ever look for money for first first two projects or three projects. If you have become best in what you do, money will follow. And I'm living proof. I would, I would have never ever imagined what I can earn if I would have focused on money. The minute you focus on money, money will you will you're, you're moving away from money. The focus on becoming best in what you do companies we are ready to pay any amount i i'm so so busy i don't get time to do i uh, most of the time i only work a couple of hours in in and my main focus is now is whatever i've learned achieved i can show it to others i can do and by doing that alone uh, I've, I've earned and and uh, and and unbelievable money unbelievable money okay and same thing is with cloud i took a step back when i moved into cloud my first cloud job which i've, I've shown you uh, initially at the start was I've shown you very big number, but you won't believe I've taken a rate cut in order to move to the cloud in my first contract. And the second contract, I almost doubled on what I was doing earlier um, uh, or, or the, my the previous contract. So become best in what you do. Companies spend millions and millions on these projects. They wouldn't mind paying you good, provided you can solve their problems and uh, focus on that So from a money point of view. Sunil, I'll take one question and then I will wrap it up. I joined... Um, do you provide a uh, hands-on? Uh, sorry, do you uh, do you provide one second? Do you help with the placements? Absolutely, we help you with your CV preparation. We give you project work. We help you. We go to an extent that we provide hundred percent money back guarantee, provided you are doing ready to do your job, which is complete hands-on lab. You have sixty days. All our programs come with a hundred percent money back guarantee, sixty days. But then you need to perform the work. If you complete all the hands-on lab, and if you think that whatever is the value. You did not get the value, whether it's job or certification, or even if you got the job and you think it was not worth, you spent a lot of time into doing your own research and our program didn't value. You have 60 days to try it out. And then you think that all you need to do is send us a screenshot that you perform the labs because I can't give you, I can't help you if you're not ready to do your work. Eva said earlier brilliantly, 91, 70, 21, 70 percent is I'm going to give you the step by step guides, path, videos, hands on lab and support but you are the one who is actually going to do that work. If you do that work, job placement is my guarantee. And if you think you didn't get it, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, that's, that's Again, this is to inspire. This is to say how confident we are. With that, we are going to wrap it up. Thank you brilliantly. 
just a few final thing, uh, thumbs up to Eva for doing brilliant job on this. Uh, Eva, and then again, we'll continue with what topics we were covering earlier here, remaining points. So uh, we'll cover that remaining points on the coming, um, on the next week. I'll, I'll schedule and I'll plan out something. Just final thumbs up and say, uh, how did you like this? Maybe rate one, two, five, five being you're happy, your time is well spent, or four or three, you're not so happy, you think we could have done something better. I also want to constructive feedback in terms of what we could have done better. And what more topics like this, of course, we are going to wrap it up next week uh, and cover, but more topics that you want to see about that as well. Okay. Uh, Kone Singh, five, 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 five. Uh, Praveen, five. Time well spent, Gracie. Thank you very much. Abdul, five. Dipali, oh, Dipali, 10 plus. Thank you very much, Dipali. You made my day. Five, well, five, rating five. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, you didn't say anything on fees. Gracie, so if you're talking about the program, attend the free class, all the program, uh, fees, everything is there. This is purely free. This program, or like what you're attending right now is free. There's no fees for this program. If you want to go a little bit deeper and the, go on to the programs like AWS or Azure or Solution Architect, Administration, Developer, DevOps, that, that's where, but this session is free. Um, Neera is saying, thank you, enlightening, motivating. Thank you. Thanks, Eva. Kaushik, brilliant. Also, let us know what topic do you want to see in future as well. Uh, this was precious. I do not want to rank. Oh, thank you very, very much, Ronit. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Ronit is saying this was precious. I don't want to rank. Thank you very much. Eva, brilliant job. Super, super, as always, with, with your sessions. So thank you very much. And yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk uh, some homework as well. Uh, Shahid is saying five the word time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also, please tell uh, we, oh, yeah, the session is recorded. It should be on our YouTube channel. Um, keep an eye on email. Um, watch the recording, maybe fast forward if you want to, and do please, please share it with your friends and colleagues, uh, because the more we do, the more questions we come, the better we can put it into, and we might add, bring more sessions like this. Thank you very much, and Eva, sorry for that. Um, I need to rush for now for dinner. Um, my wife is going to kill me now. She's very already upset. I'm going to meet my sister-in-law. I hope, and it's very late as well for you. And uh, I know you're, um, you wouldn't mind putting an extra time as well, but big, big thank you, Eva, to you. And no problem. And having said that, we are actually going into our golden content next week. So this is just setting up the context. So save your fives and tens and priceless thing for next week, because that is where we invested maximum time and research. Oh, that's a good cliffhanger. Good. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward for as well. OK, so what I do is, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Eva, thank you very, very much. Excited for the next week. Eva. Brilliant, Shivam. Thank you. Yeah, indeed. So next week is going to be much, much bigger than this lot of time. I always say that understand the cons, uh, the context. That's very, very relevant. I hope you understand the context. Now, how to do those, we'll be covering that. Over to you. Thanks, Eva. And thanks, Shivans, for a brilliant job. And take care, guys. Keep an eye on your inbox, email, and take care. Bye-bye.